Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine Mbua Kiyoko and today we are going to be talking about gates and uh, the anchor scripture is from the book of uh, Psalms 24 verse 7 to 10 which talks about uh, lift up your head, lift up your head, O ye gates be lifted up and let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty, the Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lift up your heads O ye gates be lifted up, you ancient uh, doors, and let the King of Glory come in. Who is a, who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord God Almighty is his name. And so we are going to be um, talking about gates and why we need to understand what gates are so that we can, uh, when we arrive at gates, we are able to, uh, to, to transact or to pray and to address them with knowledge in our uh, with knowledge and the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter chapter 1 uh, verse 18 that says that the eyes so Paul will say that the eyes of your understanding the eyes of your heart being enlightened that you may have knowledge of what the calling that we have and so when we begin to just uh, delve into some of these issues there to help us to understand so that we can live victorious lives so i'll just um do a definition and different types of gates and i may not mention all the gates but i'll mention most of the gates so that we can develop a sensitivity and an understanding of gates so when we arrive at those gates as i said before we're able to straight away um, address uh, those gates, recognize those gates, and um, pray intentionally at those gates. So gates have been defined as uh, entrance or exit to a place. They've also been uh, defined as a means or access or entrance into a particular place. And they are an opening also to a city or any other defensive structure. And uh, what is the importance, just the general importance of gates is that uh, the gates guard uh, particular places, they guard entrance to a particular place, they, they act as a barrier, you have to cross into a, through a gate to access um, a certain place. So in a barricaded place, gates are the means to entrance through the barricade. So that that is a definition that has been given through the dictionary that we uh through the dictionary so we want then to then look and have an understanding of what gates are and the different types of gates that exist because we have defined the entrances the exits there are things that they are the point at which things can enter and point at which things exit like for instance the gate at your house the gate um at the institution or your organization when you're entering into that gate you're entering into to access them uh, uh, facilities that are offered in that house you're accessing to uh, ac uh, you're accessing the house and the things that are inside that house you cannot um access a house without a gate and listen most african <laughs> uh now nowadays uh, prior to this especially in uh, the communities that we live there were actually no gates or fences and you could enter from any side but now because of security purposes you'll find that many many um, people are putting up gates and living in gated communities and they're living in places that um you need to have authority to access just don't just walk in so we want to look at the different types of gates and i will start with the most obvious which is the human body we want to look at the human body does it have gates and if so what are they and so the gates of the human body are um i will talk about the first gate as we say there are entrances and the exits to a particular place so the gates to the human body um the human body also has gates which uh, the lord uses to access into our lives and um the human body we know is made up of the body the soul and the spirit and the body is that which is seen and the soul is the container of the persons a person's emotions and the spirit is the house where the spirit your spirit dwells in where the breath of god dwells in so um the body of man contains several gates which um entrance can be made into a man and so we'll start right from the top which is the head gate the gate of the head the head is a carrier of the anointing um, Psalms 23 verse 5 says that anointest my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. 
and uh, Psalms 133 uh, verse 1 and 2 says that um, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the precious ointment uh, upon the head that runs down upon the beard even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment so we see that anointing uh, the head is a carrier of the anointing anointings are transferred by laying on of hands and um, crowns are laid on heads when leaders are being installed and when people are being anointed they are anointed upon their heads when people seek for blessings they submit their heads to the people whom they want to have uh, they're seeking the blessing from so we recognize that the, 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 the head is, is a gate is a place of transfer every time when I look at the Old Testament when they would come to anoint a king when they would come to anoint somebody they would actually pour oil upon his head and they would lay hands upon him and then there would be a transfer of anointing and so um, when we need to realize that the head is the is the home of the brain which is where the intellectual functions of man are that is the the memory the taste the speech um this is where the brain is a function that controls all these things so when that is tampered with the whole body is not sound so many times we go to places and we allow ourselves to be laid on hands by people we do not know by anointings that we cannot identify or recognize so my admonition and my caution is that you should carefully guard your head you should carefully guard who is laying hands who is anointing you because the anointings are transferred and whomsoever lays hands there's a transfer of anointing which cannot be seen but will be felt and seen later on in your in your in your in your life so uh that's the first gate of a man uh, the other gates that we want to look at are the eye gates the eyes these eyes they are, the, they are gates they are what allow access into us so the eyes are a gate to our life what we see is transferred to our spirit and our soul man jesus himself said that when you look at a woman lustfully uh, you are committing that sin you have not yet slept with her you've not done anything but looking at her because when you begin to look then you begin to conceive that in your heart and soon enough of course um action will follow that so um Job, Job said that he has made a covenant with the Lord that he will not look at a woman lustfully. So he was guarding his, his, himself through the eyes, through the gate of the eye. And the Christ himself said that if the eye causes me to sin, then I would rather remove it. And the eye gives light to the body. So if the eye is not sound, then the whole body is not uh, sound. So the things that we feast our eyes on, the things that we look, the things that we um, read, have a way of getting into our lives and we begin to practice them, we begin to um, interact with those things. And that is why you'll see that when you begin to uh, read uh, pornographic material, when you begin to watch things that are not glorifying to God, then you are on the road to destruction. The book of Proverbs says, in the book of Second Proverbs says, that, that, that the woman who uh, the, the, the woman who has broken covenant with her husband, the woman who, who lures you, with those things it's a way of destruction going that way is a way of destruction so we need to guard our 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 eyes the things that they see the things that um, we indigest so far, with our eyes we need to be careful over that because that is a gate into your life uh the third gate of the the human we're still talking the first gate which is a human we're looking at the human body the third gate is an ear gate and this is where we hear the voice of god and we hear uh, the voice and the instruction that God is giving to us. So uh, many times we need to, uh, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we need to hear the word of God and hear it again. So we need to uh, know that once we hear the word of God, there's action, there's a recipient um, action that takes place in us. We receive messages through our ears. So when we expose our ears to ungodly things, then ungodly uh, things are the ones that are going to be uh, removed from our our mouth so um, many of the times you may find that uh, listening uh, to ungodly uh, <clears throat> in terms of, of uh, music or in terms of messages that you're listening to that will begin to influence the way you think the way you uh, behave and the way you go around so you need to guard your ear so the ear is another gate of man 
The other gate that we have is uh, just before we move from the ear gate, the Bible says that um, my sheep hear my voice and they know it and they obey it. So as a child of God, if your ears are not hearing the word of God or the voice of God, you need to pray and to ask God, open the ears of my heart, the ears of my life, that I may, my ears of my spirit that I may hear them, the, the voice of God. The other gate, we're moving quickly, is the gate of the mouth. What we speak. Death and, uh, death and uh, life lie in the tongue of the mouth and they that love it shall eat the fruit therein. And so we need to um, know that a mouth is, is, is a gate into our life. What we speak, uh, that is Proverbs 18 uh, chapter 21. So um, the power of positive confession is being taught all over. And we have seen for saying you are what you know okay as a man thinketh, and also what you confess is what comes to you and likewise that is actually a gate so you need to be careful about what you're pronouncing what you're saying and uh, that because that 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 life life lies in your breath in the very mouth and so um, even through the things that you eat and the things that you ingest as um as a person that mouth can cause you to become uh, can be a gateway for all manner of things that will come your way sicknesses and illnesses can come into you because of uh, taking the wrong kind of thing so a uh, wrong kind of, of, of uh, eating habits and poor eating habits so we need to guard our mouths we need to guard what we eat we need to be careful because that is the way we will invite and open a way into to allow the enemy to take advantage and to bring sicknesses and diseases into our lives because the enemy also uses food to uh, uh, to snare us and to and to cause us to enter into the traps of the enemy and many of times you can go to places and foods that have been offered in rituals and rites are the ones which are being offered that's why it's important to pray a prayer before you um, partake of any kind of meal and sanctify it in the name of Jesus so uh, sanctify every bite that goes into your mouth by the blood of Jesus especially at celebration victory parties <laughs> Yeah, so that is another gate. The other gate we want to talk about is the gate of the hands. And the hands also are, 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 are gates, the things that we do. The Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not sit in the council of the ungodly, nor does he um, sit in the seat of the scornful. That is Psalms 1. And it says that whatever he does, whatever he lays his hands to, it, is, it prospers. So um, the things that we lay our hand to, can be uh can prosper because this is this these are gates these are ways in which god uses to get to us so we need to uh pray uh, because we are fruitful through the work of our hands so that is also uh a gate that we have so we also have um the heart gates the heart gates heart your heart h-e-a-r-t so uh the heart gate the bible says that um, the heart of man is is wicked who can know it you know really and it says out of that heart flow the issues of life and so you ought to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life and so we need to guard our heart against things like bitterness anger jealousy pain um and the uh, and the things the malice the things that uh, will cause our hearts to be turned away from god and uh, some may say that creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me and do not cast me away from your spirit and from your presence. And so we need to guard our hearts because once we allow things like bitterness, bitterness brings diseases, um, and malice and uh, jealousy and anger and all those things, they cause us to be uh, a stench before the Lord. They'll cause the Lord not to look upon us. And the Bible says, turn away from these kinds of things. And so we want to guard our heart. Uh, the other uh, gates that we're going to talk about on the human body is a navel gate. This is where there's a connection between the mother and the unborn child. This is where the child gets the unborn child gets the, the what is it called? The nourishment from the mother. And so that's also another gate that you need because everything that mother in, in the, uh, eats uh, uh, is extended towards the child. So that is another gate into the human uh, body. The last gate I want to, uh, the, no, I have two more gates on the human and the human body and that is the leg gate where we go and what we do. Uh, the Bible says, how blessed are the feet of those that bring good news, yeah? 
the places we go to can be a snare, can be an entrance, can cause us to move away from the purposes of God, move away from the things of God. I don't know if you've gone to places where, um, you know, like, uh, it, it, you know, I, my, my example is like, for instance, in places where there are discos and, uh, I mean, uh, the, you know, and the next, uh, the next time when you go, you go, you dance, you, it's a nice place. The next time when you think of, well, when you move away from that place, you're thinking, when shall I go to that place soonest again? Some places that your feet step into are already treated grounds for the enemy to ensnare you. There are spirits, there are all sorts of things that are waiting there for you to cause you to begin to be wayward, to walk in the wayward path. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered of God. And the path of the bright, of the righteous, it grows brighter and brighter every single day. And so you should guard where your feet are going so that your feet take you to places of of life, of health, of goodness, of uh, the presence of God, rather to places where you'll go and find ensnarement, wickedness, and um, and destruction that is waiting for you. The last gate that I want to talk about, the human gate, the, the human body, is the sex gate. Huh? This is uh, where, you, uh, this is one of the most prevalent gates that is used by the enemy. Uh, every time uh, uh, the enemy wants you to, 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 lose the fact that you're precious as a person and want you to give your body to as many people as possible to lie with as many people as possible the bible says it was adam that was given to eve not adam given to eves with an s one adam one eve and um when you go and you lie with a person which is a whole topic on itself there are soul ties that are, are developed right then you become one with that person so you can imagine lying with many, many people. You're entangled. You're entangled. You are. Um, you have soul ties with all of them, and and you need to guard your body because that is the sex gate is exactly where the fruit of the womb comes through, and you need to to be careful over that. And many destinies have been perverted because of that carelessness in that one area. These soul ties, they come and they stand as voices against you in the courts of heaven. You're there wanting to uh, to uh, move on with the things of God and this voice is speaking, oh no, no, she slept with so and so, he slept with so and so, and they're one with that person. Why is it that this blessing? Because God is a God of justice. The Bible says his, right, his throne is justice and righteousness. So we need to guard ourselves and keep purity. If you're not married, keep purity. Do not engage in fornication. If you're if you're if you're married, do not uh, engage in adultery. And it's a discipline that you need to uh, engage in. And especially in today when the media is selling sex as the next thing. I mean, you just have casual. You just have casual sex everywhere. It is not of God. Do not allow yourself to be um, shaped by the media, by the social media, by the TV, by the movies that are coming. That is not the voice of God. The voice of God is purity uh, at our sex gate. It is one of the things that has destroyed many, many destinies.